Good afternoon, boys and girls. Here's our next section of graphing and comparing and ordering fractions and decimals. Now, again, we're going to use the same knowledge we already obtained for graphing, ordering, and comparing integers. So, first step we have here, we have, we're going to be graphing. Using this, again, a horizontal number line, the x-axis, on my left hand side of zero I have negative values on my right hand side of zero I have positive values again zero itself is neither positive nor negative it's an origin every number again is relative to zero all right let's go ahead and graph this so if you look at my graph as well make your graph very simplistic I separated my graphs by I counted by fourths I have one fourth two-fourths, three-fourths, and four-fourths on both sides of my number line. One side, again, is just positive. The other side is negative. And again, make sure your scales are both accurate on both sides of the number line. Let's go ahead and plot three-fourths, which would be here. The opposite of three-fourths, of course, is negative three-fourths, which would be here. Okay, I'm just going to step back. If you look at my chart, my graph, my horizontal number line, I have correctly plotted 3 fourths and its opposite of negative 3 fourths. All right, the next section, we now have decimals. In this case, we're going to graph negative 3 and 3 tenths and its opposite, which would be 3 and 3 tenths. So if you, again, your scale may be different from mine. It's totally fine. If you look at my scale, I counted by tenths. I just increase a tenth each time from the left and the right hand side of zero. Three and two tenths, three and three tenths, three and four tenths, three and five tenths. And I did the exact same thing on the negative side of zero. All right, let's go ahead and plot negative three and three tenths. Negative three and three tenths would be plotted here. And the opposite of negative three and three tenths would be positive three and three tenths. Okay, I have accurately again plotted negative three and three tenths and its opposite. Let's go ahead and go to the next section of this portion of the chapter. We have now we'll be comparing decimals. If you look at the top there, I have think money, dollars, and cents. Also in your notes, we just added this portion. When you're thinking money, such as dollars and cents, and again, think of change or money, when you have a number that's less than a dollar, you have to go to the hundreds place value. So we're missing a value here. So we're going to annex a zero. Now, this is the main misconception students are having. We're thinking this is negative uh, $3.08, which is actually negative $3.80. And think of eight tenths. If you have eight tenths, you have 80 cents. Eight times 10 is 80. All right, now let's go ahead and use that knowledge to go ahead and compare this. Again, you're owing someone money. I owe someone negative $3 and eight cent or negative $3 and 80 cent. Now, I don't wanna owe anybody any money. If I rather had to owe anybody, I would wanna give them nothing. But in this case, let's say I had to pay someone back. I would rather pay them $3 and eight cent versus $3 and 80 cent. Therefore, this value right here is greater than this value. Which one would you come to first on a number line? It would be this value. Therefore, this would be getting the alligator's chomp mouth. That's what you guys use in the classroom, so I'll use it again. So that's the inequality symbol of greater than. Negative three and eight hundredths, which is three dollars and eight cent, is greater than negative three and 80 hundredths. Again, money, negative uh, $3.80, which is a negative, it's a debt. All right, lastly, we have the section of order from least to greatest. In this section, we have fractions. And I notes we have, when we have fractions, we have to have like denominators. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and from least to greatest. I can already identify my, my number furthest from zero is negative three. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that and get rid of that. So I have negative three first. And now I have these mixed numbers. They're all negative mixed numbers, so that's a good thing. They all have two in common. So I only need to work with the fraction portion. 
Well, looking at this fraction por portion, I can see 10, 5, and 2. They all have a common multiple, which would be an LCD, of 10. So I'm going to transform them. Whatever I do to the bottom, again, remember, you do to the top. So we need to get to 10. 5 goes into 10 two times. 2 goes into 10 five times. Now I'm going to rename this. I'm just going to write the fraction portion. This will be now 4 tenths. This will be now 5 tenths. So if I step back and I go ahead and I now align these from least to greatest, the only thing I need to compare now is numerators because we're all going to have negative 2 and we're all going to have 10 as our denominator. So just compare the numerators with a negative sign. So the next value that would become what would be next would be 5. So I'm going to go ahead and compare. Negative 2 and 5 tenths would be next. The next number, again, furthest away from 0 would be 4. So negative 2 and 4 tenths. The next number away, again, furthest from 0 would be negative 2 and 3 tenths. So this is now done, this is done, and this is done. The only value I have left is now negative 2. And how do you know this is true? Well, negative 2 is the first number you would come from, come to, I'm sorry. If you're coming from 0, you would come to negative 2 first. These numbers are greater than negative 2. Therefore, again, we're going from least, least, lesser value, lesser value, lesser value, and then this is also a lesser value, comparing it again relative to zero. All right, we have one more problem here. Now we're comparing decimals. Ordering from least to greatest. It's the same concept. Again, think of money and cent. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite these as uh, dollars and cents. So we have $1.30. We have $2, which is negative. We owe someone. We have negative $1.80. We have $0. And we also have a debt of $1.75. Now, if you look at that, aside from the whole numbers, which are not needed, we can go ahead and now make an accurate comparison of these values. Again, from least to greatest. Least to greatest. Okay, so we're looking for the greatest debt we have to pay off. The number that's furthest away from zero. That number would be negative one and eighty hundredths. This number is done. The next value we have, oh, We made a mistake there. We need to go back and correct that. The next value, the first value we would have, the greatest negative, I'm sorry, would be negative 2. The next debt that we have that's the greatest, if negative 2 is now gone, would be negative 1. In 80 hundredths. The next value, again, furthest away from zero would be negative one and 75 hundredths. Now, it's gone. We have, we have to have the greater values now. We're going to come to zero on the number line, and then the greatest value of all of these quantities are, or is, one and 30 hundredths, which is, again, look at it is as a dollar and 30 cent. All right, again, there is a quiz we will be taking tomorrow. Um, you have uh, five problems that you need to complete, again, to just prepare for the quiz. And also, just look over your notes. And if you guys have any questions in the morning prior to taking the quiz, uh, just make sure you write it down and pose it in the morning to the whole class. All right, you guys have a good one. Have a great night. Bye.